All right, next let's consider a special case of live load reduction, and that is our, that is the provisions for roof live load found in ASCE 4.8-1, uh, or really just ASC section 4.8. The equation is 4.8-1, but that's a new video another day. Okay, so roof live load. Well, first of all, let's discuss what roof live load is. Um, in terms of the numerical values for, uh, for roof live load, you can find those just in the regular uh, live load table in ASC 7, uh, Chapter 4. However, uh, roof live load does have its own special uh, reduction pr uh, procedures. And in terms of what it is, uh, think about something like a flat roof or even just a, a simple, um, just a simple household roof or something like that. Now, at first it may seem strange. Why would there be live load on the roof? Why would you have, um, live load is usually associated with things like, uh, you know, people and furniture and objects and things being stored in buildings. So why would we have live load in the case of a roof? I mean, who stores things on their roof? Um, uh, sometimes you'll see that in flat roofs, but, uh, uh, maybe old university lab buildings and things like that, but <laughs> when they run out of space in the basement, there's always the roof. But uh, anyway, in terms of normal buildings, uh, what would you store on the roof? Well, sometimes we do put things like HVAC equipment and that kind of thing up there, but uh, what I really want to get at for, li for uh, roof live load is the special case, and this is actually also baked into a lot of the um, load combinations, is the special case of uh, live load that occurs um, on roofs, but not all the time. You see, there is one particular moment or one particular time when roofs experience quite large live loads, and that is really during construction and re-roofing. That's what you need to be thinking about when you can think about roof live load. So roof uh, roofs, uh, in almost every structure, we consider the roof to be a wear item. If you have a, um, in other words, it's something that has a lifespan. Typically, a roof is typically something that has a lifespan much less than the building as a whole. So if you have a, if you have a, a wooden framed house, for example, your, uh, uh, your roof might last, you know, 15, 20, 30 years, depending on what it's made of, you know, asphalt shingles, whatever, you, metal roofs, whatever you might be using. But if you get, you know, 20, 25 years out of an asphalt shingle roof, that's, I suppose, not bad. Um, but after that, you're going to need to replace it. And that is all, and that, in that replacement process is ultimately where these roof live loads arrange, uh, originate from. So you have the weight of people, you have the weight of all their equipment, you have the weight of ladders, you have the weight of climbing equipment on very steep roofs. And also, uh, I don't know if you've ever had to lift, uh, you know, sp uh, big stacks of asphalt shingles before, but, uh, that, those can actually get quite heavy. Um, asphalt shingles, they are, you know, they come in big sheets. They're fairly thick, made of de in rather dense material. Um, when you start actually, if you start calculating the total weight of all these uh, piles of asphalt shingles piled on a roof, it actually becomes quite large. Now, the live loads that are experienced during th something like reshingling a roof are small compared to the, the large live loads that you can get in building interiors. But there's still something you need to consider when designing the structure of the roof. And we have special provisions for them simply because when thinking about live load, people often may not consider roofs because they don't think of people occupying them. So to keep that uh, clear and to make sure that we do consider the case of uh, construction and roofing in the uh, design of structure, the, the structural design of roofs themselves, the ASC provisions do have certain items and uh, provisions for uh roof live load, and in particular for uh, reducing the roof live load. Okay, so just like actual, just like the other types of live load we discussed, um, there are, the, or the general types of live load, we, the general types of live load we've discussed, there are uh, provisions to reduce the roof live load, because again, the odds of experiencing that single very high uh, maximum value across the entire span of the roof at any one time are relatively low. So the governing equation is going to be 4.8-1, and this equation is LR equals L0 R1 times R2. Um, no D2, unfortunately. And this, is, this equation is going to be applicable when your roof, again, this is only for live load on roofs, but when your, uh, when your LR 
is between uh, 12 and 20. And this is in pounds per square foot. So in other words, if your unreduced value is between 12 and 20, um, is, is less than 20, or less than or equal to 20, you use this procedure, and then it has, but even then, your final value is going to have a, uh, your final um, calculated value is going to is going to be uh, have a minimum value of 12 psf. So, the way to make sense of this inequality is really that um, you can only apply it if your uh, roof value is less than or equal to 20. Your initial unmodified LR is less than or equal to 20, and then afterwards you're going to come back and check to make sure whatever value you calculate is greater than or equal to 12. Now, in terms of R1 and R2, these are coefficients that are used in the calculation. So R1, and there's just a piecewise function defining each of these. So if it's going to be equal to 1 if your tributary area is less than, less than or equal to 200 feet squared. And it's going to be equal to 1.2 minus 0.001 times your tributary area if you are between, if AT, the tributary area, is between 200 and 400, like so. And then it will also be, then it will finally just be equal to 0 0.6 if AT is greater than 400, or sorry, greater than, sorry about that, that should be 400, that should be 600, less than 600 and 0 0.6 if AT is greater than 600. And all of these, of course, in square feet, because we're using freedom units here. Then R2 is just another piecewise function. And it's going to be 1.0 if F, and we will define F, if parameter F is less than 4.0, um, if f is between uh, 4 and 12, then this will be equal to 1.2 minus 0.05 times f, 0.05 times f. Um, or, and then finally, it will be equal to uh, 0 0.6 if f is greater than or equal to 12, or just greater than 12. Okay, that's simple enough, but uh, what, uh, oh, actually, uh, yeah, well, what exactly does F equal? Well, F is the number of inches of rise per slope of run. Or actually, I should say inches rise per foot of run. Let me illustrate this. So we just need to make a quick illustration to illustrate what F is. So F is your slope parameter in the R2 equation. And if you want to calculate this or want to determine this, well, let's say you had a, a roof uh, with a run of six feet and let's say it, it went upward vertically three inches. Okay. So one way to think of this is three inches of uh, rise over six feet of run. Rise over run. But we need to get this per foot of run. So we could, we could then um, make that one inch of rise by dividing by three over three feet of run. Or alternatively, we could say, okay, um, if we wanted to get this down to one foot of run, we could say this was one third inch rise 
So this would be a very flat roof. This is not to scale, of course, of one foot of run. So basically you just normalize your rise over run to uh, one foot of uh, run. All right, and finally, I, just, I would just like to plot these out a bit so you can see what these, to see what these coefficients really look like graphically. So I think that's kind of useful. Because the equations can be a bit annoying sometimes, but if you plot them out, they make a lot more sense, I think. And so let's just do a quick plot of these. So first I'll create a quick plot of R1. So we have R1, and this is based on the uh, tributary area, so AT. Based on the tributary area AT. And you're going to have kind of a relationship like this. There's a linear portion uh, bounded by two flat portions. And this value is going to be 200 square feet. This is going to be 600 square feet. Up here, we're at uh, 1.0. And down here, we're at 0 0.6. And then we just have the interpolated line between them. So up to 200 feet, you're going to be, or up to 200 square feet, you're going to, um, up to 200 square feet, you're going to be at 1.0. Past 0 0.6 or past 600 square feet, you're going to be at 0 0.6, and between them, you just uh, find where you lie along the uh, line between those two extremes. And then R2 is similar. Another two constant portions uh, divided by a downward sloping line. Um, except we have here. Uh, this is our F value, our number of inches of rise per foot of run. This is 4. And this is 12. And this here is 1.0. And this is 0 0.6 as well. All right. And really, that should do it. So yep okay double checking something and yeah and I think and that should do it so I know it's a bit confusing that the r1 and r2 values have the same kind of <laughs> coefficient numbers uh the same constant value numbers uh but it does work out just with different f values and at values Okay, so that'll do it for this portion of the uh, lecture. I just wanted to do a brief video covering the process of determining uh, the modification or the reduction, I should say, for roof live load. And so, again, how, how to review how to use these, you will first um, get your... Actually, maybe I'll just write this down. This will be a little bit easier just to write this. Just as a review. So your first step is going to be to uh, get table value of uh, the roof live load. Two, uh, if the unreduced value, this is L naught here, if L naught is less than or equal to 20, uh, apply equation, apply that equation we saw earlier, which is LR uh, is equal to L naught R1 R2. And then three, double check that the final LR value, that LR is greater than 
12 PSF because you're not allowed to go below that. They still require you to have some minimum value across the entire thing. Now, what if your uh, roof live load is greater than 20? Well, in that case, you, there are some other provisions that, and those are intended more for uh, roofs that actually are occupied dur during normal uh, use. For example, if you have a rooftop patio or if you have something like a, a green roof, a, you know, roof garden, that kind of thing, solar panels on your roof, maybe uh, anything like that. So um, these provisions deal apply to most structures, especially most smaller structures, uh, houses and that kind of thing. But uh, so again, you first get your roof live load value. Then you see if you're less than 20 PSF, uh, pounds per square foot. If you are, you apply our roof lab load reduction equations and then double check if uh, at, the, at the end, double check to make sure that your LR value is not going below the minimum value of 12 PSF. And if you do have a roof that is greater than 20, there are other provisions in chapter four uh, to deal with those. All right, that'll do it for now. Just wanted to give a brief introduction on, a brief discussion on uh, the reduction of roof, of roof live load. And I'll see you all again soon. And as always, thank you.